We learned today that a total of 22 million people across the country have lost their jobs in the past month. That's around the same number of jobs that were created in the nearly decade that's passed since the last recession ended. Here in Massachusetts, more than half a million people have filed for unemployment in the last month. And there's a lot of concern about the weeks ahead now that federal small business loan program is out of money. But at least one business in the state has been hiring. Governor Charlie Baker announced today that Partners in Health has brought on 176 people to do coronavirus contract tracing by phone. And while that will help in the future, for the present, he's focused on making sure hospitals have as many resources to treat the increasing numbers of patients as possible. They are keeping up, but every day we continue to see more and more patients in very rough shape come into the hospital. We are doing what we can to hope for the best, but we are absolutely planning for the worst. We've talked now for a couple of weeks about the fact that somewhere around the middle of April, we were going to enter the worst part of the pandemic. And that part of the pandemic is here. This virus obviously doesn't work on a schedule. I'm joined by Representative Santiago, who's also an emergency room physician at Boston Medical Center. Welcome to you, Dr. We've been checking in with you over the past couple of weeks, and you told my uh, colleague Jim Browdy a few weeks ago that even though Boston Medical Center had to lay off about 10 percent of its uh, staff, that things were fine. Is that still the case? Well, listen, I've had the privilege of working the last four or five weekends, and I've seen this virus progress as it relates to the capacity of strike in the hospital. And you're right, a week ago, there was just a slight blip where Boston Medical Center needed to send a couple of ICU patients over to other hospitals. But over the course of the past uh, couple of days and weeks, and I worked this past weekend, there was plenty of capacity and ventilators at the hospital to get the job done. So Charlie Baker spoke today about the surge still to come. They projected originally around April 20th. That's coming up in a few days. Have you seen that specifically at your hospital as well? There's no doubt that I think we are in the surge. Over the past couple of weeks, I've seen a slow uptick in the number of patients. And I just worked this past Monday, and there were a number of patients who came in terribly sick. I think one thing that I've noticed were people coming in after they have been diagnosed. They were either diagnosed in an emergency department or at a clinic, and they were coming back significantly sicker, requiring ventilators, requiring ICUs. And that's what I noticed just this past Monday. We've also heard that there's been kind of an imbalance in terms of um, this uh, coronavirus affecting the minority community. Has that been the case of, of what you have seen as well? I think so. I think if you just look at the data, it'll speak for itself. I mean, you have Chelsea, which is 40,000 residents in a, uh, in a two mile square radius, and they've seen significant numbers of people get infected. At Boston Medical Center, we are a safety net hospital. So we traditionally treat um, black and brown communities, but we're seeing people come in with not just your heart attacks, your strokes, your accidents, but with high levels of and high instances of uh, the coronavirus. And that should be no surprise to anyone who's worked in this area before. These are communities that have been affected with significant health equities long before COVID-19 was here. They have high rates of diabetes, lung disease, mm -hmm. pollution, poverty. And that's going to result in significant um, increases in COVID-19, which we're seeing here today. The state released a list today, which was rather fascinating, of all the hospitals in the state and how many patients they're seeing, how many they've processed, and how many are sick in the hospital. Did you get a chance to look at that, and were there any surprises on the list? I did. And it's no surprise, really. I mean, the big academic centers are, are, are pulling their weight, but this is going to pick up significantly over the next two weeks. The surge was predicted from April 10th to 20th. Now people are saying near the end of the 29th. My hope is that you know, we hit, we hit the peak and, and we reach a plateau rather quickly. So we have enough capacity in terms of ventilators, in terms of ICU. It's also important to note that these field hospitals are coming online. I think we're up to five across the whole state. Um, we have one in Boston, the convention center, which is going to ultimately house about a thousand patients, 500 homeless confirmed and 500 overflow patients. And so we're looking to scale that up. I'll be working them this weekend to see how things are looking on the ground. How do you stay in touch with what are, we're told is the majority of people, majority of people who are sick, that aren't sick enough to be in the hospital. Do, is there, do they, do they call, do they zoom in like this? How, how, how do you comfort them? How do you tell them what to, what medicines to try? How, how, how do you, how do you stay in touch? Well, you bring up a, a significant challenge. I mean, we are seeing people come into the hospital. I mean, long before COVID-19, the role of the emergency department is decide disposition. Should the patient be admitted to the hospital or should they go home? 
And so even if you send them home, you make sure you send them with strict return precautions. If you're having high fever, shortness of breath, come back to us. And they've been coming back to us. And it's not so much been the difficulty in, in transmitting this information to the patients, but the insidious virus that for some reason, over the course of four or five, six, seven days, patients get significantly worse requiring admission mm-hmm. to the um, uh, ICU or the hospital with several interventions. So, Dr. Sadio, you, you were on a lot of hands. You're also a state representative. And I know you've been staying in touch with as many people as you can in your own community, restaurants, small businesses, people who are really feeling the economic pain of this. What kinds of questions are they asking you? What do you tell them? What do you tell them about reopening? What, what comfort can you offer? I mean, we've been very busy in the community. I think there's two major issues that we've been dealing with. So the, the unemployment issue. And so we've been able to connect dozens of constituents to unemployment services and over the uh, uh, unemployment um, services and over the past couple of days or weeks or so, the government has expanded their um, from 50 to 500 people to able to process claims. And so we've been very happy to see that now with small businesses, listen, the area that I represent in Boston, the South end, the heart of it is small businesses. And so we've been on conference calls with the small business community. I've tried to highlight one South end business a week Mm -hmm. just to highlight what they're doing just to stay in touch and to make sure that neighbors and constituents are shopping at these places, but it's very challenging. And when we get over this public health crisis, hopefully in the next month or so, as we are on the backside of the curve, the economic fallout from this will last significantly longer. And we need to have all hands on deck for this. And I'm looking forward to working closely in partnership with small businesses and with colleagues at the state house. As you mentioned, the South End is really well known for a lot of its small shops and restaurants. Are a lot of these people telling you, listen, I I don't know if I can do this. I'm not going to survive it. Even if we reopen, because there's going to be panic about going to a restaurant. They're going to have to do something about tables. They can't put them shoulder to shoulder anymore. What are they asking those kinds of things? That's a tremendous concern. And, you know, I'm, I'm an emergency room doctor. I've had my fair share of difficult discussions with patients and families, particularly in the area of COVID-19. But one of the most sobering talks I had throughout this whole COVID-19 era was a conference call I had with small businesses and telling me that even in good years, margins are, are, are pretty thin. And so the fact that they might have spent their whole life putting work in, spending their money to have the small business, uh, to think that that could go up in flames, I mean, it's tragic and it's sad. And we're doing the best we can as a government and as neighbors to keep them afloat. All right. Dr. John Santiago, thanks for joining us. And we will stay in touch. We'll be checking in uh, every week or so. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Emily.